Rami Salamatot, Rami Salamatot Art. Thank you so much for this opportunity uh, to be together. I would like to really congratulate not only uh, the Pagbabago of Pilipinas, but all our partners and all of you here represented in the growing, growing family and network of what we will soon launch as the imperative to really act now. And if I may use a term borrowed from Martin Luther King, it is called the urgency of now. And the rationale is most aptly captured in the exclamation point, green, obviously. But the Philippines, the entire archipelago, turned upside down. And that is deliberate thanks to the brilliance of Bar Gigona and our team of, of uh, graphic artists as well as those who have contributed to just conceptualizing this entire project. But to turn it upside down precisely because this is about why we need to act with great urgency because everything has to be rethought, revisited. Everything that we have thought was usual, business as usual, politics as usual, has to be turned on its head. So that is why, that is the rational actually. And very quickly, just quick slides, Pam's going to show us um, from the very start. That's not the first slide. <laughs> so, essentially, we, we wish for you to be involved, to be brought into this loop of action and engagement. The Philippines is a climate hotspot. It is ranked fourth amongst at least 20 countries seen as hotspots. In the archipelagic nature of this country, 7,000 islands, we will be affected out of the 16 some regions, at least 14. And not coincidentally, five of the most insurgency plagued regions of the country, including Basilan, Tawi Tawi, Eastern Samar, uh, Eastern, uh, I mean, the Biko region, would be most susceptible to climate change and sea level um, rise. And that says a lot about the fact that it is about conflict as well that gets exacerbated along with food security and the implications on health, agriculture, and the entire livelihood and opportunities and economic and uh, potential of all of uh, many of these regions. Next, please. So just very quickly, Pam, just go ahead. These are floods, land landslides. We get, what, 20 now, even with more ferocity, 24, 25 typhoons a year. It's, it's, these are portraits of devastation, depletion, despair, and the green environment, the forest, and look at that sliver, that is one of the more recent maps of the Philippines, and the last remaining forests of Sierra Madre, a bit of my native Bukidnon, northern Mindanao, Palawan, but otherwise Cebu, Samar, Leyte, they're all gone, except for some little lowland forests around Subic, and they're also cutting them down. Next, we have the uh, blue environment, the sea, that's Man well, the brown environment of pollution, Manila Bay, that's EDSA on any given day. Manila Bay and Pasig for the uh, blue environment, that's refuse that's floating all over, all over our metropolis and into our tributaries in Pasig River and Manila Bay. We, we are a country called high vulnerability but low adaptive capacity. And this is reflected, in fact, in the Environmental Sustainability Index, which I personally worked on, and which we hope the main proponent of uh, who, Dr. Dan Esty of Yale University, would be able to keynote, if ever he does get his schedule fixed, that he will be able to, to be with us when we, when, we, when we launch this in April, when we begin this, this, this series of summits in April. But this Environmental Sustainability Index shows to the Philippines, look at that bottom. Vietnam is the most, is at the bottom rung. The Philippines is second to the lowest, meaning we are not sustainable. That we destroy our forests, our seas, we pollute our air the fastest, and we're not taking care of the governance, the institutions, the kind of policies that we really need to address sustainability. So, indeed, next time, it's a clear and present danger. Cagayan de Oro and my native Bukidnon, the logging in Mount Kitanglad is showing devastation of this soil. Next, please. 
climate refugees, and the deepening of poverty and conflict. Therefore, if this is about an imperative, we cannot wait. It is confronting an inconvenient truth for us. But we look towards the kind of solutions that we can craft and engage sectors with both private and public, developing a roadmap for adaptation and mitigation with the following very quick objectives of building, documenting, measuring, evaluating, mainstream, but building the, the action framework towards solutions. Um, adaptation, will move on, please. With very quickly scenario planning, first phase, moving towards really drafting an agenda, second phase, a summit proper, made up of a people summit and an expert summit. You can see this in your kits for details. And third, and very significantly for the first time in Philippine history, a business summit on climate change. And that is why we have all our partners here today to elaborate on that as well. And then to look at, no, just one, one quick, just to look at the kind of green businesses and green to gold initiatives as well that we can look into and what we call, and Lori can talk about this also more, biocapacity matrix. Measuring your footprint, yes, businesses and the kind of impacts they have on the environment, but also the kind of social accounting. What implications we have for the, for the health, for the food security, for the agriculture uh, implications as well of, of the communities where we find these businesses in. And finally, the phase four is the regional rollout for local stakeholders. Indeed, it is important to re-echo and to ensure that there is that kind of engagement as well and cooperation and collaboration with all the rest of the regions. We will begin, Secretary Gozon will also mention about Cebu in the Visayas as one of the first pilot areas for a regional rollout. And finally, this is it, this is a picture of a country where we will see more of this if we do not act, deepening poverty, migration, but we still have the capacity to foresee and to forestall. It is the urgency of now, because this is our only home, and this is our only country. So we have to act now. Don't wait. The Philippine imperative. Maraming salamat po for your presence.